Hey there, everybody. This is Gabby Allen with Out on a Limb with Gabby Allen. That was not meant to be duplicated that quickly. Don't come after me, editors. Um, today, we have a slightly different format that we're going to do, and I'm super excited, and I always say that because I am. I have the greatest friends in the world that are willing to come on and actually talk to me in public. So this is good. Um, today, we have Vicki Burkholder, who is both a nonfiction and a fiction author. Today, we're going to be talking more about um, her nonfiction. She has a wonderful book um, that's all about world building and how to make sure that you're getting the right things in your world. <clears throat> and quite frankly, your world building, whether or not you're in New York City today, uh, current contemporary romance, current thriller, um, or, you know, the more, um, the one that people think about more is like fantasy, which she does write fantasy. She writes sci-fi. She writes contemporary romance. She's just a, a real go-getter on all the different genres. And I love it because they all very much have her voice. Um, and one of the parts of her voice that I love the most is her ability to suck you into worlds, because quite frankly, I don't read sci-fi. Like, almost ever. I, there are a couple that I will read just because of knowing the person, but Vicki Burkholder was definitely the first person to make me read a sci-fi that I wasn't like, great, now I can build a starship, but I don't know what that book was about at all. So we're going to get right into it right now, and um, let's pop on then with Vicki Burkholder. If you want to tell us a little bit about you, who are you, and what do you do? Uh, I'm Vicki Burkholder. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, I'm you know that great. rule of three that you're supposed to say yeah. the same thing that you want somebody to hear three times. I, I think we might have two or three times that now. So go ahead, Vicki Burkholder. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I write, as you said, science fiction and fantasy mostly. I also write some contemporary romance. Um, I write uh, nonfiction on editing and world building. Uh, I'm also, I've been an editor for 20 years and I'm a professional reviewer. I write reviews for a website. Um, that's it's called sparkling reviews. <laughs> they're sparkling they're reviews. fantastic. Sparkling book reviews. I apologize, but yes, yes they're, they're fantastic. Um, Vicki does a really good job of like pulling out the things and getting what your book is about. Um, and also gives very, to me, very um, across the board fair ratings. And I appreciate that, which means that I can trust that what she says is not just pudding. It, it's, you know, there is meat to, to why um, she has given certain ratings. So go ahead. Sorry. I try. And it's a very subjective thing. I've read books that I couldn't stand that everybody else was gushing about. And I've read <laughs> books that I gushed about that other people couldn't stand. So it really, it's all what you feel about the book at the time. Right. right. Um, but uh, yeah, world building is um uh, something that's really important in writing any genre um, absolutely like you said whether you're in contemporary new york or wherever like your book what about nautically you had to set the world for me because i've never been to catalina island mm -hmm. i'm never going to go to catalina <laughs> island probably. well uh don't be promising okay. yourself anything we already talked I, about it if, if, I, if I USA to, okay, so let me back, we, we just have to, we have to put a little caveat in here. First of all, Vicki Burkholder and I have known each other for 15 years. So if one of us says something about that must be on tape 234 side B, basically what that means is that we've had the same conversation 72 times and we have now decided that we must have recorded it. We'll just play that back instead of continuing to say this so there's some inside jokes there's some fun stuff one of the things there's some some issues with traveling and so I have often 
um, threatened her with drugging her to make her go places. So <laughs> if, I, if I have to, I will absolutely just load you up with the Dramamine to get you on a plane. And then yeah. we'll cuddle, jump from the, you know, from California coast right on into the top of the world the <laughs> airport. Um, and hopefully you won't realize that we could have fallen off the cliff. So, <laughs> so oh, <laughs> hey, by the way, my t-shirt today says I run entirely on caffeine, sarcasm, and inappropriate thoughts. I, I had to have this. I really feel like somebody just made it right for me. And <laughs> why, the, why not? Why not? So world building. Yes. World uh, building. I mean, it's uh, like Vicky said, it's, it's so, so important. And so one of the things that I was hoping that we could talk about is kind of like, what are the different aspects of world building? Because when people hear world building, they're thinking, you know, fantasy or sci-fi where the animals are different and the money is different and the terrain is different. And so you have to <clears throat> build these worlds. We've talked about David Edding yes. before, which is a, an author from the eighties. And I mean, he had a whole 10 book series of books and then at a 12 um, series. And then at the end, he wrote a codex to kind of like detail the things that's way too much work for me so we're not asking for, for you to do all of that for world building but i know a lot of people think that it's far more extensive than it actually is so if you could kind of like maybe for a, a little bit for a contemporary romance it's all about the setting mm. what are the people wearing what are they driving where are they living right and that's what world building is you are building the world to put your reader there. You want them to feel like they can actually walk down the street and know what's going on. So like in, again, nautically, I could see Catalina Island in my mind. I, I saw the way you built your world. Thank you. Um, <laughs> with, <laughs> With your world, with cat, uh, contemporary romance or even historical, you don't need to build it from basically the ground up, which you do with science fiction and fantasy. Right. When you're building a science fiction world or a fantasy world, you've got to start from scratch. And right. in some cases, with the Big Bang. Uh, <laughs> You so, literally build a world. Right. So like when you're building your sci-fi worlds, because that's one of the things that I love the most about your sci-fi books is that, um, and I kind of hinted about this earlier, is that there are certain sci-fi books out there that are extremely technical. And I, I know that there are people who love those. <clears throat> and I am all on board for there are books out there for everybody. I do not have to love everything, absolutely. Um, but with your sci-fi, I got sucked in because it was just enough to intrigue me, but not enough to make me feel like there should be schematics at the end of the book. So, I mean, what? why did you choose to do it that way? Well, it all comes down to details, actually. <laughs> You're... Whenever I'm creating a world, I really go into detail. I draw maps. Um, yes. I've been known to sit at the beach and build sand castles of my <laughs> lands and maps. Do you take um, a picture of it then? Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do we my have kids. flags and stuff? I mean, yeah. like, are, do you have little tiny people? Do you put shells in there? Are there hermit crabs? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love but, it. So you're visual. You yes, need you I'm need very the visual. visual. Okay. I need to see. I actually draw out what my spaceships look like because mm -hmm. when I have my people walking through that ship, I need to know where they're at yeah. in that ship. Yeah. But I don't need to tell you all that stuff as the reader. So then I that's... can give you a little bit of it. 
mm -hmm. the flavor of it without overwhelming you right. with everything. Right. Um, I know. I can have my character character discover that oh, that grass is blue without telling you exactly why it's blue and all the <laughs> chemicals. <laughs> the, uh, and I know that there are people who love that more in depth. So I hope that anybody listening to this is is not taking that because I prefer ones that don't explain it all, that there aren't people who won't love. That was two negatives in a sentence. And I apologize for that. That's almost worse than using all A words. Um, that and although apology is an a word so uh i i'm i'm just i want you sitting at the table with us to kind of also know that you don't always have to go all the way in that um there are a lot of readers who like sci-fi and fantasy that is still high fantasy but doesn't necessarily have to be um so very uh detailed well i mean even i um when i'm reading a science fiction book and i i love my science fiction mm -hmm. but when an author starts getting into every single detail i skip over it okay um, okay it just, to me it's not moving the story forward uh -huh. it's kind of boring okay uh, yes it's a nice detail but i don't need to know every right. single <laughs> every single thing yeah. every nut every bolt i've got a three inch penny nail and 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 that's i mean i think you know again as i've said pretty much in every single episode that i've done so far is that there are as many ways to write as there are people who are writing. And, you know, I mean, if you love all of that, write the book that you love. But it also, I, I don't want anyone to be deterred from writing that sci-fi that they want to write because they don't know all the nuts and bolts. So do you consider when you're world building, are you looking at like, do you tend to base it off of a society that either currently exists or one that has existed previously, or are you just you're just going on it? On I your just own? create. Um, okay. I have, for me, building it on something that already exists mm -hmm. gets too sticky. You can oh. get yourself into a lot of trouble. Uh, yes. Um, now, okay, like my um, my warriors, they may be based on the Marines, the okay. U.S. Marines. They may know how to do martial arts, but I don't call them Marines. I don't right. call it judo right. because I don't want to get in trouble with a society that says, oh, you did this wrong. I can, oh. I can create my own world, mm -hmm. my own people, my own societies. Um, and it shouldn't look like anybody else. Right. Right. Oh. Well, I mean, I'm not that not to pressure you or anything, but there's this dragon series that I'd really <laughs> like to say and <laughs> i really like to see it. i'm working on it I'm yeah, working uh -huh, on it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. and um but that's one of the things you know you have aragon you have not aragon is was that the dragon yes there's yes. aragon there's, there's there's so many different there dragons Books. lots of dragon books and so like when you are looking for or when when you have an idea like okay i want to do a, a sci-fi that's kind of like the fifth element or i want to do a dragon book where you know our main character scoops his poop uh, like do you do you think about other things that are like that and then try to kind of like come up with variations to make it yours or does does yes. it just pop into okay um okay well 
like you said, there are tons of dragon books out there. Right. So when I'm creating my own dragon world, it's like, okay, I don't want it to be compared to how to tame your dragon. Right. I don't want to be compared to uh, Anne McCaffrey's Pern Riders. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Or the Aragon books or... Mm -hmm. So I want it to be unique. Yes, it can be a dragon. Right. Uh, which everybody does. But I want my dragons to be unique to my world. Oh, okay. Um, well, and that makes sense, you know, because you, even if you're, even if you're working on a contemporary romance, you know, or, or a cozy mystery, you know, you still are coming up with the town that these people live in. Where are the buildings? Why are the buildings? What kind of families are you dealing with? And, and so, like you said, some of world building then is going to be setting, um, but it's also going to be kind of setting up your story too yeah. because you need to know okay well these are the things that happen in my society whether that's hunger Games society or um <clears throat> the dust chronicles i think is another one i want to say that's by maureen mcgowan um but so like everybody has like a, a different thing. Um, Maria V. Snyder, I think, had done In and Out, which then later was a, a movie that's not based on her book. But she had like a world where everybody was inside this globe thing because they didn't think that they could survive outside. And so like that's which been done similar before. To the, the old book um, back in the 70s. Mm. Um, logan's run yes yes logan's run daniel just watched that the other day i was like why must we watch things that are like 40 years old 50 years old I don't because know. it's really good it is i know i i gave in after that well but, okay like many things the movie isn't quite as good as the book <laughs> but <laughs> i bad. am with you on that one well and that's you know when when you're going to so i don't want people to be afraid of of like looking at other things and getting ideas but you want to make sure that you're not using someone else's world right. because that that is their creation just as much as their characters are their creation and that kind of thing but some of the decisions then i guess when you're talking about world building are like who your people are what, like do you go as far as money on your first run through world building or do you sometimes go yes broad and then bring it in it really depends on the book I'm writing and okay. how important that's going to be. Like um, I'm reading one right now where barter, where everything's about barter. Oh. Um, and they do talk about money, some people buying things instead of bartering, but they don't go into detail on the money okay uh, what is being used right um the same way with my dragons yes they're going to breathe fire but some of them are also going to be water dragons which right. is not done very often yes um which is why you should be doing it soon <laughs> <laughs> okay I'm, folks she's really pushing <laughs> I'm, I'm putting in a word i'm putting in a word yep. for it i want it i want it i want it and okay which tape was that now nah, i think no. that might have been that's one of the more recent ones so I, yep. i'm gonna say it's probably like 756 probably side a so we might have bled over does even know what tapes are ah, anymore. hey that's you're not allowed to ask that <laughs> I, I am, I that's love world building. Yeah, uh, that's true. That is very true. Well, okay. So let's talk about, let's say for instance, that, um, you want to build a world that's like in the eighties, <clears throat> have you like, do you do research? 
because like it's going to oh, yes. depend on you know like um what kind of phone were the phones available like i know that i think in the 80s was when they had the phones and the purse and and you know if you were james bond you like had one in your car but like so do you find if you're going to backtrack something like that or if you're looking at doing a sci-fi in a world that's like the 80s are do yes. you do research and check to like see what was available so that you can kind of research is uh research is absolutely essential no matter where you're placing your story or when you have right. got to do the research you can't build a realistic believable world without doing a research like you went all the way to catalina Island. Ah, um, <laughs> that was an excuse yeah but, i just, I just uh, wanted to go i edited a book a few years ago it was a historical Mm -hmm. very well written except that she obviously had not done her research on oh. the clothing ow she had a guy wearing a stetson before stetsons oh. had been invented <laughs> that, uh, that could there, be a problem there were a lot of mistakes that were mm. made clothing wise mm. so if okay. you're going to do a historical yes build your world but do your research on mm -hmm. what people were wearing, what the language that was used. Right. Um, most, of, most of my books, well, in fact, all of my books are obviously English, but I do play around with syntax. Okay. With some of them, especially with aliens. They may not speak perfect English. Okay. Um, our syntax, our American syntax is very different from even English, English, right. British English, I guess. Right. <laughs> um, True. And, and still even, different. even regional. Um, mm. Miss Gabby Misty catches me. Whatever my name is. Yeah. <laughs> is, is it catches Tuesday? me all the time. I am Pennsylvania Dutch. Love it. <laughs> and they catch me all the time on weird things that I say that to me sound absolutely normal. Yes. But to somebody reading my books, it may be, huh? Right. Uh, and that's right. part of world building too. It is how you speak, mm -hmm. um, how you dress, how you, what you eat. Right. Um, Whether my, or not there's a tavern. Yeah. Is it a tavern? Is it a bar? Is it a pub? Hard tack and moldy cheese. That's yeah, case yeah. five, side B. <laughs> Do you eat a sub? Do you eat a hoagie? Do you eat a hero or right. a cowboy? Right. Do you use gum bands or rubber bands? Right. Regional right. dialect is part of world building, and you have to be aware of that. Yes. Well, um, like I know my grandma was it, uh, my grandma's sister would um say you know the bathroom is back the hall <clears throat> and not everybody understands that that means you need to go down the hallway to go to the bathroom <clears throat> or my grandmother would say or my grandmother's mother would say um what did she say read up so if you oh, yeah. read up the room, like the, it sounds like R-E-D up the room, but it is a shorthand for get the room ready. And so I think, you know, you have to, although I will say with Kensington, um, I have been reined in a little bit on some of that because when I was writing the Tally Graver mysteries as Misty Simon, I had Pennsylvania colloquialisms in there because it's, it is what it is, you know, and I, I had a, an editor from New York City. Um, I, I think Essie went through it first um, and she's my senior editor. And then I think at the copy edit stage, somebody had said, I don't know what this is. And I'm like, well, it's a, it's a Pennsylvania thing. And they're like, well, I don't know if other people will understand that. And, you know, most times I was like, that's fine. We'll just change it to, you know, whatever normal people say, <laughs> people who well, don't live in Pennsylvania. 
but there were a couple that I fought for because I was like, but it, it if you want the small town flavor of central Pennsylvania, then I'm leaving in that people do not cross the river because you have to spend the night, even though it's only 15 minutes away. Well, I ran into the same thing several years ago with a book I wrote. It was set in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. uh, actually in Lancaster County, and it is Lancaster, not Lancaster. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but in my book, let's see, I had them parking in the driveway, and the driveway was Black Macadam. Uh -huh. And my editor came back and she says, what is this? Driveways are concrete. Oh, interesting. And I was like, no, not in Pennsylvania. They're yeah. not. Not yeah. unless you're rich and right. have, you have uh, well laptop. Right. And quite frankly, it's not even if you're rich, it's if you don't mind replacing it every couple of years because it's going to get cracked gonna, because of snow. Yes. Yes. Freezing and thawing. Right. Right. That uh, would be why the bridges have those teeth so that they can expand and contract when, you know, the snow, and I'll say bridge ices before um road and it's interesting to have somebody out here that is not familiar with with pennsylvania in general because of stuff like that and so these are things then that you think of when you're world building yeah and like even outside of the world like if you're going to have a planet that you know operates close to earth then you have to kind of i would think take into consideration where the sun is yes. do we have extra suns what's the moon do and that kind of thing just to like give it that flavor because i know you know when you're writing a murder mystery you're you have this certain suspension of disbelief you know i mean are you really gonna have an amateur <laughs> getting in there and <clears throat> doing all the things yeah. that you know the detectives obviously just have no idea even though they're the ones that you know get paid and that kind of thing but if if you're going to play with that i think you need to then be truer to certain other things so yes. that you're not asking for the disbelief to be suspended for a lot longer than they thought it would be you know well it's like i just had a a book that I got contracted for that um, spaceship, they're yeah. out of control. They need to find a place to land. They mm -hmm. found a livable world, but now they're looking for the right place. Mm -hmm. And the one character points out, well, what about this island here? Well, if you look, all the vegetation is on one side of the island and it, all the leaves and branches on the trees are pointed uh -huh. one way. So that means the wind comes nice. directly from one direction and very uh, strongly. And I actually based that on uh, New York. Oh shoot, I can't think of the name of it right now. Uh, it was a a uh, place where my husband uh, did um, uh, National Guard, and oh, he okay. said all the trees up there were all, all the branches were in one direction because the wind that came across that mountaintop was so uh -huh. strong. That Interesting. That's the way everything grew. And See, I used that as part of my world building. Right. So you can use other things mm -hmm. to build your world. But you should have a reason for it right well and i think that the, uh, quite frankly that's one of the things that i <clears throat> do appreciate about your books is that they do have a basis i don't need to know all the different pieces of why you chose to do that particular kind of thing on the island but because you boost it with enough things that make it real then it's it's not um I, I just read past it and let it do its thing because i don't feel like oh well, that <laughs> that makes no sense you know what i mean it's more like oh huh, and then we keep okay. on galloping through the woods <laughs> there's galloping i like galloping in the woods yes. someday i'll get a book called touching touching death 
too but you know we'll get there <laughs> So at some point, I'm going to have Vicki Burkholder come on and talk about her books. Hopefully she'll actually come back since I've given her so much crap right now. <clears throat> we'll, we'll make it happen. We'll do Dramamine and we'll have her on camera. That's a lot of fun. I won't lie. <laughs> anyway, so what is the name of your book and where can people find it? Do you have a copy? Oh, yes. Thank you so much. It's called World Building for Fiction Writers, and you can get it on Amazon. And basically, all it is, each chapter is a different section of world building. So you have actual world building, and then you have the plants, the animals, then you break it down into society and everything. And all it is, is just a series of questions mm -hmm. that if you answer those questions, you will have built a world. Okay. I, it came out of uh, several years ago. I actually taught a six week course mm -hmm. at the Camp Hill Library on oh. world building. Uh, I didn't know you had taught that. I don't remember that. I'm sorry. I think it might have actually been before we met. Oh, okay. because I was still living on the other side of the okay. town. Okay. So yeah. it was before we moved here. That's and awesome. That, yeah. So yeah, it was a six week course that I taught there. And this is what came out of that course on okay. world building. And, so. and, yeah, and I love my book because I, I do have it. I just I think it might be in a box right now because we're still not completely <laughs> moved in. <laughs> Yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it, it does help to know I have for myself when I was when I was looking at Catalina, I'm like, OK, there are certain things that I know because I've been there um, and I've been there multiple times. There are certain things that I wanted to know that I wanted to ask. And so that's why I went over there. But then there are certain things that I'm like. OK, so I know for certain that most people drive golf carts. Why is that? Now, I knew that that was because they have a certain amount of vehicles that are allowed on um, on the island and the waiting list to get a new vehicle on is like 35 years and you actually pay shipping things. You have to pay by weight. And so if you're going to bring a car over and it's, it's interesting. And I, I plan on maybe playing with this a little bit in further books. And that's that people have figured out that there are certain small cars that have the same parameters as a golf cart. And so as long as it's not bigger than a golf cart, you can actually have that without registering it as a car question doesn't it get cold there not really oh okay not really i mean it, it's pretty it's pretty even you're talking about like if if you're out and about at night and who wants to be riding in an open air car or snow oh or... no 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 i don't i don't know that they get snow they're very um as an island they do definitely i mean there's there's a little chill in the air but i i don't believe they they're not doesn't lined get up down like cold snow. yeah no no i i would have to like actually that. i have to look at that because i know there's a spine um, world on building. yeah i'm gonna have to do some more world but well and that's the other thing so um you don't necessarily have to build everything if you're doing a series is do you feel like it's okay to build most of it and and add on as oh, yeah. books okay oh yeah so how do you how do you keep track of that miss vicky Burkholder? i have spreadsheets, <laughs> <laughs> well, spreadsheets that you're have, amazing at <laughs> i not only have spreadsheets but in the back of my science fiction series with the uh -huh. wild rose press i now have um a glossary and very the cool. names of the worlds the names of the people and the things um everything like that for the readers that's in awesome the back of the books so yeah the first book in the series there was a little bit the second one there's a lot more the third one there's going to be a lot more 
Awesome. And so, so you're on. building. So it, it builds. Right. As you go on. So you're yes. building the world building. As I build it. <laughs> <laughs> it's yes. a BWB. It's good stuff. Building world building. <laughs> um. Oh, I love it. Well, and like I said, you know, it, even in your fantasy, there are certain fantasies that I'm like, okay, I really didn't need to know about every blade of grass. And uh, again, there are people who love that. I am not one of them. That doesn't mean that there aren't, that they aren't good books. It just doesn't necessarily play to the things that I love about reading. And so, um, so, I mean, do you find that you prefer to not necessarily have super in-depth or is it, is it super in-depth up here? It just doesn't always tra Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Before I start writing, I may have a notebook full of research. Oh, okay. And notes. Um, one book that I wrote a very long time ago called Akashante. Mm, one of the really, really good ones. I had 50 pages are. of notes before I even wrote the book. What? <laughs> 50 pages? What? And five? Who oh. my characters were, what they could do, because there is magic involved in this. So I had to have who could do magic, what were the consequences of doing magic. Uh they travel a lot in this story so what was each different land like oh okay and uh because they went through mountains they went through the plains mm -hmm. who are the people that live in each of those variations interesting um i had all kinds of notes on that story because each section of the book was a whole new world okay and I had to make them believable. And I mean, that makes sense, especially if you're, I, I don't know that you have to do as much work as that. If, if you are well, doing like modern day Chicago, you don't necessarily have to have every single no, thing. Because and, everybody and, knows Chicago. Right. Or at least knows it enough to be able to realize yes. that that's where you are. I may are. not know what the streets are, but I know Chicago. Right. The feel of Chicago. Yeah. And so, but your book, the world building book is for both, for all genres, correct? For all genres. Okay. There's, um, there is a special section in the back that is strictly for fantasy. Okay. It has to do with magic and magic worlds. Right. Uh, the rest of the book. Yeah. If you're writing a contemporary, you're not going to need to come up with your money system and you're going to know what your schools and right. churches and religions are like. Um, so it is a very in-depth book that certain writers are only going to use parts of. Mm -hmm. And it's also the kind of book that you can skip through here, pick out a part here, pick out a part right. there. Right. You don't have to go through it from page one to page whatever the last page is. <laughs> However um, many things I wrote, yeah, whatever, you can whatever. Skip through it. <laughs> oh, okay. So, you know, like if you had to do like what, what do you think is one of the first things that you should be thinking about? Like what's, what, what's chapter one? Uh, it depends on the genre. Okay. If you're okay. You're writing a contemporary. Right. Where is your town? Okay. Where is your town set? What does your town look like? Right. Um, you're going to introduce your characters, but you're also going to introduce where they are. Yeah. Uh, so you need to know. Uh, I know a lot of people like me. They'll sit down and actually map up out their town if it's a mm -hmm. fictional town. If it's a real one, you can download the map from Google. <laughs> uh, but you should know where everything is so that mm -hmm. if you have your character driving her car through yes. the stoplight <laughs> at the corner <laughs> of Trindle and York. Maine. <laughs> Trindle, Trindle York. is Maine. <laughs> oh, okay. It's been a long time since I've been that's, there. That's okay. Um, no worries. At the, at the corner of Trindle and York, you're 
going to know what's there. You're going to yes. want to know what's there. You're going to want to know where Rake Straws is. Oh, we all uh, <laughs> need to know where Rake Straws is. Yeah. The Rake best. Straws, by the way, is an ice cream shop in the town Denver. where she lives. I love it. I love it. I love it. They're open right I now. I miss it. I bet you do. My aunt actually sold her house next door to Rake Straws. They've been there for like 43 years or something wow. like that. So I always used to pull into par her parking spot and then she'd yell at me because I'm not supposed to park in her parking spot. <laughs> we used to go there so often. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's a, it, I, well, but, and that's one of the things that I loved about doing like the Tally Graver series is I don't tell you that it's Mechanicsburg in the book, but if you're from Mechanicsburg or, or have ever, you know. Here, you know, because I've put everything in its place, but uh, that's actually the first um, series that I had ever based it on a real town. I've always like based it on the feel of a town. So yeah. if you're like a, if you're like an old school Misty Simon reader and you started out with Poison Ivy in either 2005 or 2000. 10 i think is when they came out the second time maybe 2012 um it's based on a town called kilmarnock in virginia but i called it martha's point and that way i could like play with where everything is and you can be dated sometimes you know like um on main street i named the the uh hardware store something different actually i don't think i named it at all but right now it's for sale so you know if you had been very specific about calling it this hardware store and then it gets sold and they change the name you've kind of uh, dated your i have an urban fantasy that i've been working on that is this talisman yeah i'm working on i know i know i'm, I'm giving you leeway baby I'm but my town leeway. is called Clearwater, and mm -hmm. it is very loosely based on three different towns right. um, from up the Susquehanna River. Yes. Um, and I just kind of combined them into one town. Yes. Uh, my, my series, um, the Crystal series, uh, Emerald and a ruby crystals loosely based on where, where i live now very loosely okay. based but i used some of the stores different yes. names don't right. ever use the same names yeah, unless you're going to be very very nice about <laughs> them <laughs> uh, exactly exactly uh, i used a lot of the stores that are here, but they're all called something differently. Right. Um, so that's the first thing you do is have your setting in mind. For my story, Prime Time, it's set on the moon. Right. Okay. What happens when you're set on the moon? Well, in my case, I built my world down into the moon. And I gave a reason for that right. because of radiation. And the only thing that's on top, you see, is the domes, geodesic right. domes. So right. you need to know your setting before you start yes. so that when you're writing the story, it flows easily without you having to go back and say, oh, what did I call that then? <laughs> I mean, I still do that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You've I mean, got to have it in your mind. Right. So that it flows better for you. Right. Right. Well, um, and, you know, <clears throat> if you're going to be uh, writing like a domestic thriller, you have to know, you know, where things can be hidden and where things can pop out of and what are the local you know legends are you going to play with any of those and so there are a lot of different things that you can take into consideration and there are a lot of different things if you're that writing you anything that has any kind of weaponry in it yeah you better know how that weaponry works right. and how <laughs> it can be used <laughs> and how it's going to be a problem maybe right uh, if i possibly. fire my phaser gun is it going to run out of juice on me when I need it most. Right. Um, right. And am I going to need a special kind of battery? Right. Right. Um, 
or or a crystal or crystals <laughs> <laughs> that's not on a tape that's in a book that i'm critiquing right now <laughs> so oh uh, well as always misty goes way over where she's supposed to so we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up i know it's, i try it's just never actually gonna happen but I'm and that's still gonna why try. we love you well i appreciate that um so like i said you're gonna come back and talk about books that are out um closer to the books coming out however um your website address is vickyburkholder.com okay and then when they were if they were to go on amazon they're going to look for you under vicky burkholder yes and they will and it'll it's come vicky up. with a y please okay so v-i-c-k-y b-u-r-k-h-o-l-d-e-r and that way you can go into Amazon and you can find, um, you know, some really good world building because Burkholder, if nothing else, it's so funny because I, like I said, she sent her first story to me and I was like, oh, it's sci-fi. <laughs> Dang it. This is the only thing that I, it's the only thing that I don't really read. And then I started reading it and I, I, I'm pretty sure I texted her. I'm like, what? what did you just do to me i i am i feel vi wrong violently wrong right now i just enjoyed a sci-fi <laughs> <laughs> immensely dang it i want to say that was prime time and i enjoyed akashante too um i enjoyed akashante too and i i've enjoyed the the crystal um the crystal keys correct yes the, the series Ruby and, key and emerald key emerald key and there are a lot of she has a lot of shorter um fiction available too and you know there's there are so many different instances of how it's done well but um i would definitely look into her world building book because it really does guide you through and you don't have to answer all the questions oh lord no but if but if you have them and and it gives you something to think about and maybe that sparks an idea I, that's just it's just never going to be a bad idea to have a good idea so anyway well thank you so much vicky burke holder for being here and i thank you listener for hanging out with us here at our table and chatting oh i just ripped my earbud out because i had made it all the way through without doing anything stupid so you know the universe was like hey by the way here we come and so um as before if you have any questions that you think vicky or i could answer go ahead and pop them into the comments and uh, we'll come back and kind of look through see if there's anything we can help you with and then um we're going to sign out by saying this is out on a limb with gabby allen thank you vicky so much for being thank here. you a blast i appreciate you being on camera with me and I love all your book covers behind you and I hope everybody has a wonderful wonderful day that was not an a word I'm putting it out there and I'm owning that and uh, I will see you next time and we'll see Vicky the next time she has a another book out that we're all going to be panting for so I hope you have an amazing day bye <laughs>